But okay. we're going to tell you guys only what we secretly think about the Pelicans. <laughs> Look, we're going <laughs> to kick their asses. They're no bad. doubt, dude. And, and you were just I, saying, I wanna... bro, say it. You were just saying, you were saying they were bad. When they're bad, they're bad. Say it. Well, say it to me. Don't say it to anybody else. All right, all right, all right. So the thing about the Pelicans, right, is you, you can understand that their defense and their offense is, is good. In the most cases, they're really good. But if you can right? throw them out of their initial actions, if you can disrupt their point of attack, say it, bro. If, say it. Yeah, if, if you can make them understand that they're our bitches, they have nothing else they can do. And what they will do is they will literally collapse. I mean, think about what happened with the Timberwolves. Man, the Timberwolves is a perfect example of how you don't play a game, okay? A dude breaks his hand by punching a wall. Um, you got two other dudes that are fighting on the bench, and then they continue in the locker room, like big time fighting, like brawling. And the Pelicans the gonna room. beat them, and then the Pelicans still couldn't beat them, and it was a close game, and they still couldn't come together to beat them. What does that mean? That means that there's no fucking heart sometimes, and when you don't have heart, and you don't want to see it, you don't want to win it, man, it just is like, Bleh. like listen, you know you're in trouble when you get outplayed by the Lakers. And you get paid, help played by the Timberwolves in a fucking week because you're ahead of all those teams a little bit ago. They're, and now all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> oh, well, well, dude, either A, they don't want to win and they're trying to get close enough to the top 10 they possibly can get right now, or they just don't give a shit about anything. And I, I want to say, I don't think they give a shit. Well, what if they do give a shit and they just can't get their shit together? Because that's what it looks like probably since Christmas, that time period. Like it's a coaching mentality at this point. Well, maybe, but like they have good players, right? I mean, I really like Trey Murphy, I like Herb Jones, I like Brandon Ingram, CJ can ball. Like, but in the end, what I'm like, what I see is a team that if you punch them in the mouth, they crumble, and they need to land the first punch if they're going to be able to stand up. And if you're talking about a heavyweight matchup, you know what I mean? Yeah. The key is with a team like this is you land the first punch. You get their back against the wall, and and I don't think they're going to stand up. What do you think? Come on, be honest. Like we're not going to release this because this is we, we like to be when, respectful dude, to our when, opponents. Right. And this when is you're disrespect. Fucking the shit out of somebody, and yeah. you come inside of them, right? You release billions of sperm cells, right, man? And sometimes when you meet somebody, you're like, "What the fuck? How did that sperm cell beat the be rest of the billion out? Like, what the fuck is wrong with them? You know, like, and and I look at it like." When you have an athlete that's a, a true athlete that could be one of the world's best athletes that just proves that he just sometimes they don't care. And I'm not saying one person in, in particular with the the um, Pelicans, but it's proven. Hang on. Are you saying Brandon Ingram reminds you of Tracy McGrady? I, I'm saying that Brandon Ingram is the closest thing we've had to Tracy McGrady since Tracy McGrady. Dude, they both look so stoned out there. And I so respect stoned. stoners. And I it, listen, like, and I think it's one of those things where when you're playing at a high level and you're like, you know what, like, I, I'm cool with just going out there and being relaxed. That's cool. But then you see how Shea goes out there and plays in the fourth quarter. You see how Dort plays in the fourth quarter. And you see how J-Dub and uh, Josh Giddy and all these other guys are playing in the fourth quarter. Like, yeah, I heard a difference. I heard the Pelicans took a day off. They didn't practice on one of the days. So they only got one practice and then in preparation. You heard what Zion said, right? Right. Yeah, like Zion's pretty much come out and is like, nah, I don't want to work out. I'm not going to work out. I'll play when I'm ready. And it's like, dude, I get it. You just signed this massive deal, but that's the last money you'll ever get in the NBA if this is your mentality. So, like, you're saying they're a secret dumpster fire. And here's the thing. They could have been the fifth seed going into the final game day, and they slipped all the way to the ninth. But if they everything had gone their way, they could have been the fifth seed. But it seems like the team that was finishing up the season isn't really the team that earned that that ranking. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, you see the implosion of what happened with Dallas. And, and as much as I don't want to say that about the Pelicans, it's exactly about the Pelicans, man. The implosion that's happened at the end of the season, I think, has everything to do with, if you look at the future of the draft. Like, this is pretty much the last really strong year. I mean, yeah, you can say, oh, well, this year is going to be good at this part. This year is going to be good at this part. But there's not going to be another draft where you're going to have 12, 14 players strong in the draft for a couple of years. So I think there's teams like Dallas that are like, fuck it. Top 10, we get to keep our pick. I think you see Pelicans being like, fuck it. Keep our pick. 
You know, like, I, I think this is what's happening, man. I think we're seeing this in real life of what teams look like when they fucking tank. Because the Pelicans get top 11, man. 12. I think they get 12. <laughs> think about that. Number 12. And they're thinking, well, 12 is not that bad because J-Dub came out of that. If we could get J-Dub on this team. Dude, the Pelicans. It's too late, though. The Pelicans, they got, um, they got Dyson Daniels, who was drafted earlier in the draft. So it's not like. Um, and I like Dyson, but J. Dub is that next team. Level. If you trade out Brandon Ingram and CJ, right? Yeah, and Valachunas. Mm -hmm. Okay, you trade out those three guys, and you go straight up young talent. I, know, I like it too. straight to the draft. Like you can have that team in good shape in a year and a half. Yeah, you look at Herb Jones, Trey Murphy. Otherwise, that's they're that fucked, bro. Box right there, man. They're fucked. If they're buying in on Brandon Ingram, they're buying in on CJ. They're buying in on Valanciunas. Like you're it, waiting around for Zion, and I get like the temptation, but dude, trade it, Zion. You can get two first rounds for him right now. Build around those guys, but they're not. And in the end, you know that coming into this game, there are two players who are going to get the majority of the shots. It's going to be Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum, and, and, and Valachunas. Maybe early. CJ. They might go to him early, like just for like a couple passes, but like in the end. He's going to have to like work his ass off on the boards to get his 20 and 10. He might be able to pull that off because of the size, but I, I have a sense that we could play him off the court, you know, just by stretching the court with Jay will hitting a couple of threes and making him play out of position. But like, man, yeah, we might lose this game, but it doesn't change the fact that the Pelicans suck right now. Yeah. One in a billion shot at surviving in life. Don't waste it, man. Just remember that. Like, it's the common sense in the world that we live in. You don't waste your fucking talent. And guess what? If you're getting high all the time on your own supply, you're wasting your fucking talent. I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. I mean, it depends on your goals in life, right? I mean, yeah. If, if, you're, if you're like James Harden in the aspect of I'm going to strip clubs every single night, you know, like, but by all means, no, don't everybody, waste a million dollars in a year at a strip club. Not That's everybody your, is like... Prerogative. At the point where they'll do anything to win a championship. Dude. I, listen. You see teams that are so hungry to win. Then you see players that are so hungry to win. And you're like, when they mix, you know. It's like, boom. This team's going to be good. Right? That's what Oklahoma City's all about. It's mixing. Everybody's seeing it mixed. You're seeing a team like the Pelicans where it's just like every single time they have a big game or big opportunity to do well, it's like they're just a few franchises short of a fucking Happy Meal, bro. And it's so obvious. It's just like I, I don't I don't get it. I don't I get it why you wouldn't just stop and recognize we've got three players that are good that we can get massive hauls through. Let's trade them. Let's get rid of them. Let's get seven, eight picks for this, these guys. And let's rebuild this team and this organization right away. We already have the young talent we need to start off. We have it like the Oklahoma City Thunder do. We have the young, quote, unquote, star coming up. Like, utilize that. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I, maybe that's just because I see how Sam Presti has, has laid out the, the process and every GM wants to do it their way. But when you're seeing things change and the GMs aren't changing – you're like scratching your head saying, don't you see what we're seeing? Or are you just so blind that you don't give a shit about what's happening in the NBA? As long as I stick to my plan, we'll be okay and playoff contender. Sounds like fuck the normal plan and being a playoff contender. I want to be a championship contender. And I think that's the difference in the mix of what's happening with the NBA right now is people are so concerned about being playoff contenders. They're forgetting that there's a fucking championship on the line. Dude, we got to beat two teams that are really the Pelicans and the Wolves. We can do it. And if we do, we get extended playoff time, baby. So, boom. One in a billion, baby. Don't waste your shot. See you guys.